Hey everyone, it's Elaine, and I'm back here in my art studio called the Pinecone Cabin, and I want to show you what's on my crafty tables today. I don't really have a whole lot going on as far as projects I am working on at this moment. Um, you know, I do have the goal this year of finishing all the little journals and stuff that I have started. Um, I'm going to get them done this year. This is the year. This is the year. Yep, I'm trying to convince myself of that. Anyhow, this um, table right here, you can't really see it, but I have some wallpaper up under there that kind of got bent and folded, so I'm trying to get it back flat again. This, and let's see if I can do this without making you seasick. Um, this tray, one thing that I like to do, hold on see if I can do this. I'd like to do um, clay tiles. So this was the very first tray that I had ever done. And I'd have to say it's probably maybe about 18 by 12 inches. And um, funny story about it, I'm going to go on and take the time to tell you. When I first did it, I used clear polyurethane on it. Um, in my learning process, I learned that I was not paying attention to the depth of the tile. So some of them were skinny, some of them were fatter, and it messed with me a lot when I went to put them into the tray in different places. Um, I've done some other things too, some crosses, some pencil boxes, um, some box tops. Anyway, when I went to use the polyurethane on that, I had to do many coats of it because of the depth of the tiles to try to get the tray then to be, you know, all one level. Um, so what happened to me is the more layers I put, even though it said clear, it was not. It started to really yellow that you couldn't even see the clay tiles anymore. Then also what happened to me was, and I don't know if you can kind of see, yeah, you kind of can, um, it started to actually seep through the edges of the tray. I guess the way the tray is built, it's not really sealed in there like with wood glue or whatever. And what I always do on the back of any of my trays, whether it's a cabinet door tray or, you know, this wooden tray, I always line the back of them with a vinyl placemat. And that way, if you decide to stand them up on a plate stand, or whatever you kind of have a decorative back as well well this was just a vinyl placemat that I got at the dollar store well it really didn't do the trick it warped and buckled um, when I tried to glue it in and I don't know if it's because the polyurethane um, the polyurethane was still dripping through or whatever so what I've decided to do is I've gone ahead and pried that off and now I've got my little sander out. I'm going to take it outside, of course, with some um, <clears throat> breathing equipment. And I'm going to try to sand all of that glue slash polyurethane off of there and put a different placemat in. So that's one little project that I'm working on. Um, if you remember, the last time I showed you my cabinet door samples, um, they were covered in paper because I had just... Uh, sprayed the chalkboard paint. So let me go around here to the other side and this will make more sense to you. All right, when when I get a cabinet door sample, think of it now, this is, this is the drawer front and this is the door front of your cabinet. So what this company does is they put them on a wooden frame and then they're nice enough to actually also put a wooden back on them. So, what I do is the first one that I ever did, I put my little key hook at the top, just like the sample was made for. Well, what happened is if you were one of those people that have chunky keys and a lot hangs down, when you go to open the door, you're, you're hitting your keys. So then someone said, well, just put it at the bottom. Well, thank you much. So that's what I do now. So these are my cabinet door samples. Um... So that is the drawer front. Um, in this case, I just used what I had on hand already, okay? 
Um, sometimes I'll put like one of those big old, it's a, it's a big key and it's got hooks on it. Or, you know, I might find something, I think I've used um, pieces that look like a branch, but it's metal. I've done all kinds of fancy things. I think even once I had a mermaid. Um, but anyhow, so then this is the, let me get here. Where am I at? Here. <laughs> this is the piece that holds your chalk. Then this is, let me get here. This is where you open it. So then when you come inside, you see it's galvanized steel and it's cork board. So these take a little bit of work. And of course, I always lose a little blood when I deal with galvanized steel. But so I have these two and they are going to be for sale. Um, I'm, usually they go pretty quick because like I said before um, in the last video, these are really unique. I have never seen these done anywhere. I've never seen them on Pinterest. I've never seen them in anybody's YouTube, whatever. Lord knows it could be someone out there that's done it. But, you know, I started doing these a couple of years ago and did videos on it. And no one has ever said anything to me about seeing them somewhere else. So I'm pretty proud of myself on that one. So that is the reason why these are down here now is because I'm going to a retreat in a couple weeks. And it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I'm going to take those to sell. And then I also have, um, these are just furniture samples, nothing fancy. And I've just added different hooks to them. And then on one of them, I did the um, Tim Holtz clipboard. I've actually sold these and um, a few of these before. And then underneath it there, I have a little journal thing that I'm going to take with me to actually work on. And then we've all seen these before. Um, you get them at the hardware store and it's like for little parts and everything. Well, this one has happened to be in my husband's work shed for, I don't know, I know probably 10, 15 years, like forever. And I don't think he's ever going to use it. I think I got it for him for a Christmas present once and there it still sits. So I'm taking that on the to the retreat with me to decoupage. And then I'm not quite sure where I'm going to use it at in here, but that baby is going to get used somewhere and I'm thinking about maybe like all my little metal parts to put it in. Um, put them in there to keep all my little metal pieces together. And so this is just kind of my staging area right now. And then I'm still, I, I haven't, since the last video, I've not really sat down and done anything in my collage book. I think I might have done a couple of pages. Um, but I did get the little wooden box all finished. And I just put some Velcro feet on it, the the soft side of the dots that the other part, the other half of the dots had gotten you. So that's all I did on there because then maybe it won't, they won't get knocked off. And then these are some of the boulders you all have seen me do before. Well, I don't know if it was the paint because I've never used this paint on these before. I just sewed them and then I painted them and then I did a clear coat. Well, one thing I noticed that my clear coat was just a clear coat. It wasn't a weather protecting coat. Well, I've passed these out. <laughs> so I'm afraid that I'm going to have some rocks out there that are not going to stand up to the weather. And you can see that the ink, that's when I discovered it, is the ink smeared on that one. Um, so I'm going to have to repaint it. This one I had put outside and it said, welcome to the pine cone cabin. It turned white. The rain just beat off the clear coat and the paint. So lessons learned. Um, it was a spray can paint done by um, one of our art stores that sell a lot of supplies. <laughs> but I guess it really wasn't weatherproof. It's not necessarily their fault. It's my fault, I guess, for not reading it. So I'm going to repaint the blue one and then I'm going to write on both of them again. And this time, hopefully, I'll use a real weather protectorate. But anyway, that's just what's on my crafty tables. Um... You know, I'm doing this series and I'm going to pop in from time to time and let y'all see what I'm up to. So I appreciate it. And if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And remember, I have a Facebook group and I have a Facebook page. I have a little Etsy shop. Don't have a whole lot in it, but I think what I have is pretty cool. And what else do I have? An Instagram, I have a Twitter and I have a personal Facebook page, of course. So please um, look me up 
And like I said, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me that thumbs up. And I really do like chatting with people and making new friends through YouTube. So I'd appreciate it. And everyone, please behave and be safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.